And our guests in this next segment are talking pickleball with us, as they did last year. I think that was their first annual uh, yes. tournament. Rob Lowe and Steve That's Truex right, are here. Right. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. Great to have you both here. Thank you for having us. Our pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Uh, last year was the first one. Rob, how did it go? It went uh, terrific. We grossed over $15,000 and netted over uh, well, close to 11000 It's the benefit rotary. It is. It yeah. Is, which, which rotary are you? Are you the well, sunrise the, or the, the noontime? No, we're the noontime rotary on Thursdays. That meets every Thursday at noontime at the Holiday Inn. You get the chicken lunch, the potato, you some veggies. It. Yes. Yeah, all the good stuff, right? All the good stuff. Yeah. My man Matt is there setting up the rooms for everybody. Matt, Absolutely. Yes, Matt's mm-hmm. great. Matt is. Matt's the man. When I, I didn't know Matt worked there, and a couple of years ago, we rented a room over there to do something, probably a candidate for him, and Matt who was much younger then, as was I, used to listen to me when I was the nighttime DJ over at 97.5 33 years ago when I got hired. <laughs> this month, 33 years ago, by the way. Uh, that, which is, that, that always kills me when I remember hearing the, these little teenage voices calling and requesting songs, and now they're <laughs> leaders in our community and functioning adults. Can you play New Kids on the Block? <laughs> Not again. <laughs> I just finished that song. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the pickleball tournament. When are you uh, hosting it, and, uh, and how do you enter? It's going to be on March the 11th and 12th, which is a Saturday and Sunday of this coming year, obviously, uh, which is about six weeks, well, close – less than two months out mm-hmm. and um with with it we we have uh 12 events it's uh, men uh that go from 18 to 49 and for the one age group the other age group is 50 on out to seniors and it's uh intermediate and advanced so that's four different groups there it's the same with women another four different groups and then you have the mix with the same age of 18 through 49 and 50 throughout senior again with intermediate and advanced but the the mix play on sunday and the singles meaning it's not single matches they're all double matches but all men's on saturday all women's on saturday as well you playing steve i volunteer i don't usually play rob did put the pickleball bug into me about two years ago he got me out there playing pickleball with him at the randy smith center and then last year when i was president of rotary he came to me and said are you enjoying pickleball i said yes he says i've got a way we can use this as a fundraiser because that's part of our ongoing mission in rotary is to raise money and give it back to the community often in conjunction with other organizations and things that are consistent with rotary international it has seven areas of focus and two are uh education and the welfare of mothers and children. Those are the two areas we we really work with. So our money over the years has gone to all different initiatives, including literacy initiatives, a dictionary project. If you want to hear about what we did last year with this $11,000, $10,000 of it went to the Stauffer's Marsh uh, Nature Preserve. If you're familiar, if you're not familiar, you should go check the place out. Where is it? It's uh, out by Shanghai, West Virginia, right near Shanghai. It's a, an old farm with wetlands that was given to the Audubon Society as a nature preserve. We partnered with the Audubon Society. They wanted to install some handicapped accessible walkways so that everyone from uh, children in wheelchairs to old veterans from the VA Center and walkers could use that. Uh, the 10000 of the dollars we raised last year went into putting a kind of mesh that you put grass seed on, and it makes a flat surface surface that's not like walking across the field like it was before or walking across the hiking path. You uh, are able to roll or trundle along in a walker and enjoy the beautiful, beautiful scenery out there. So those are the kind of things that we do with that money. Very nice. Matt Miller. Uh, give us an idea. What was the participation like? You talked about the money raised. Uh, how many pickleball players did you have? Well, first, let's start with the logistics. You have uh, the Randy Smith Center in Inwood. You have uh, eight pickleball courts, and with the eight, which limits about how many uh, registered players you can have. They, we we uh, sign up with pickleballtournaments.com to run the, the, the effectiveness of this pickleball tournament. And having them to run it, they, they had this gauge, and they said we could use uh, the maximum we could get as participants would be between 176 to 200. And we had uh, 89, I think it was 89, that actually registered. But it's really 109. I'll tell you why. is because when you sign up for one event, 
well, that's one spot. But if you sign for two events, which you can, you may play the men's uh, on Saturday, and then you may come back and play with your wife or girlfriend on if you know, obviously, uh, or both, yeah. or both. Yes. <laughs> so it's fifty dollars an event. It's a different game. It's, 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 <laughs> right. It's fifty dollars event. So it's twenty sign up for that. So you add the twenty to the eighty six or eighty nine that that gave us over a hundred, which was really an excellent showing. Actually, the the pickleball manager who ran the or, uh, the uh, the tournament for us, she was amazed about the number of volunteers we had. She said, "Rob, they always say we have volunteers coming out, and we never get anybody." And Rotary, with other uh, people who played pickleball, came out as as volunteers. She was amazed with that as well. She was amazed how well the the setup was the, for our first time as Rotarians. Yeah, Rotarians are a service oriented bunch, and pickleballers are a passionate bunch. Absolutely. Amen. Which goes right across uh, that there's, you know, it's it's no, uh, uh, I get excited about that, obviously. But I told you pickleballers were a passionate bunch. <laughs> I was is. pounding the it podium is. over yeah. there. <laughs> but it's it's a matter that, you know, there's no restrictions about social uh, or whatever. You know, you, you can just, uh, you can borrow a paddle. You don't have to have fancy uh, gym clothes or anything. You show up. And, and the people that are there are not just retirees. Actually, three years ago, the average age was about 66 years old. Two years ago, it was 44. Last December, it was 30. Mm-hmm. And you have over 36 and a half million people playing this sport now. Amazing. John, how, how far away? I just wanted to ask, how far away did some of your people come? Did, uh, do you know? I think there were even a few from because of family here, but from North Carolina. But again, it's obviously the Maryland. A lot of our pickleball people who play in tournaments go out of the area. We set the footprint for the first time, the Rotary Club did, and people are now coming to our tournament. Awesome. Yes. Over the weekend, I'll be honest with you, I don't spend a lot of time in the pickleball world. Uh, but over the weekend, there's a, there's a show called on CBS. I think it's called Innovation Nation. Mo Rocca, the reporter, runs it. And actually, pickleball was was featured. It was invented by two dads who were challenged by their kids in some resort place. Just kind of interesting. No kidding. That's yeah. how it all started. You mentioned pickleball courts. Is that a thing? It's just not a modified tennis court? It's... They use modified tennis courts because it costs to obviously build just specific uh, uh, pickleball courts. Now, Berkeley County is putting in several pickleball courts as we speak, but they've modified the tennis courts like out War Memorial Park, obviously at the Randy Smith Center, the basketball courts, uh, and the, which are the volleyball and soccer field uh, courts indoors. They have modified those eight courts that we can use as well. Is there a lot of doping scandals or anything that are around the oh, yeah. uh, the pickleball game? I, it, it's Rob himself was suspended four different times <laughs> for too much coffee. <laughs> coffee goes well with it. Yes, it does as well. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, March the 11th and 12th. How do you register, Robert? Okay, uh, go to sign up on pickleball tournaments with an S at the end, all one word. dot com. And then look at the search bar, type in Rotary. Some people go, how do you spell it? R-O-T-A-R-Y. <laughs> pull down where it says for the state, West Virginia. And when you pull it down for that, and then uh, you hit, obviously, enter. And then you just scroll down, and it's right there. And then it says re- to register. And you sign up. And then if there's a problem, you uh, there's a contact uh, uh, point that you can hit that. If you have trouble registering, it's Amy Cameron. She's out of Pennsylvania. That, that we used last year, and she's happy to come back again for us. Very good. And, and Steve, I know you're also looking for sponsors for this tournament as well. Yes. Uh, we can accept sponsorships at all different levels, and we can accept the less organized donations of all different amounts. And, Rob, how do people go – how do people sign up to become sponsors? Well, we have on the Facebook. We have also uh, with the uh, with the blast out of the Chamber of Commerce uh, – uh, there's a unique individual. He's not pro yet. He doesn't know if he's going to go pro, but his name is uh, Steve Ed- Edmonds, E-M-M-O-N-S, and he's phenomenal. He's been traveling. He's been going to – there's two big t- uh, pickleball tournaments, one's out in California and one's in South Florida. And uh, he, he just travels all around with his son and, and uh, other friends uh, entering these tournaments. And last year initially, he, he questioned if he was going to play in ours. And he did play, and I got a, a text right afterwards that 
we did well. It did very well. So mm-hmm. the point is, he's he's uh, one of the administrators with what's called Eastern Panhandle Pickleballers. Uh, I don't know if it's association, but .com, I think it is. In any case, there's over 744 uh, uh, participants. Mm-hmm. There's a pro? There's a pro pickleball mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. circuit? Yeah. Yes. As a matter of fact, isn't there a, f- a former Martinsburg football player, Matt? You- Kevin. Kevin Walker, Walker, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is he ever, I guess if you're a pro, you can't participate in this, I'm guessing. I'm guessing not. I mean, I know Kevin, but I've not seen, I mean, he's floated in and out before mm-hmm. with the other people who help run the pickleball tournament. Yeah. I mean, not the tournaments, but who, of everyday play. Who won last year? Do you remember? I don't because you have you have uh, first, second, and third places in every division. So mm-hmm. that's a lot of winners. A lot of winners. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Okay, uh, that's nice. Uh, and uh, and again, this will be held at the Randy Smith Center. Correct. And uh, that's certainly a nice facility. Lots of parking, all that good stuff there too. And uh, in regards to some of the other projects Rotary is working on, what are you guys up to? Well, right now we uh, have a new refined process for accepting and vetting all of our different uh, requests for grants because we do grants for all different projects each year. Last year, we had uh, two big projects. We were debating which one to go to uh, take on and then shrugged and said, let's try them both. And we were able to accomplish both. There was a what they call the Zen Den at the Boys and Girls Club. They have more and more kids there on the spectrum. They get uh, overstimulated. They start to hand flap and things. They researched what it takes to calm down a, a young student who is on the spectrum and getting overstimulated. We gave them $4,000. They fixed a room up with soft music, soft lights, various textures, because if you can get an overstimulated child outside of their head a little bit to uh, touch the different types of things on the walls and the carpet and such, it, it breaks that cycle of stress. We We also spent $10,000 on handicapped accessible playground equipment. It's right near the Berkeley Heights Elementary School, but it is not restricted to those students. We chose that location, partnering with the Berkeley County Schools because it's central in the county. And I went out there after it was installed just to see how it was going, and the kids were loving it, and a couple teachers were there with an aftercare program, and they were loving it. And... uh, one of the kids wanted to know, Mr., what are you doing out here looking at all our playground equipment? And I says, well, my organization sponsored this. And all these little voices chime, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then pretty soon it's push me because it's got these spinners and, and swings that you can roll a wheelchair onto and all different other kind of things like that. So with even if you don't have a handicapped child, we had all kinds of kids out there, and, and they love it, and it warms my heart to see them enjoying that, and especially kids, families that have handicapped and non-handicapped kids. Uh, out of, out next to Berkeley Heights Elementary, there's now playground equipment that will accommodate both of them. That's awesome. You, The project you've mentioned today, the money that you used last year was to build some handicap accessible uh, things at a park, and you're, you're helping kids on the spectrum. Is, is there a particular reason or an influence that has you donating to these causes, which are so worthy and, and too oftentimes underfunded? Our board just takes a look at all the different uh, requests, applications, the things that we're aware of, and we go with something that is in line with what we can provide. We tend to go for bigger things because other organizations can take care of a lot of smaller smaller things, but we, uh, we review that and we select projects from that, uh, things that we're going to write grants for, and it, like I say, it almost always ends up being for community health, for young mothers, for, fa- for uh, families that are in the area, or for children, particularly school-age children. For years, we did a dictionary project and put a dictionary in the right. hands of every third grader in the county. And then uh, this last year, we got away from that, just thinking that this is the age of iPads and such. And we're looking, we're looking for something else to do, maybe in the realm of affective education for kids. Uh, but we're, we're, we're always looking for projects. We just go with our heart and with what we can afford and usually that comes down to children or some other healthy activity like pickleball which Mm -hmm. is near and dear to our heart so we are sponsoring we are we have in mind at least to sponsor pickleball equipment for the boys and girls clubs and other things we've kicked kicked around rob i don't know where we sit with any of that that's the kind of thing we like right well god bless you for the work that you do and the people that you're helping also i'd like to add too that internationally rotary 
uh, well, Rotary is an international organization, but sure. there's se seven areas of focus. And we did list those seven areas that we try to stay within those uh, for areas of foundations where we do spend monies. And they're listed at the bottom without going in detail on the sponsorship form. Well, you can mention them. So people, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's basic education and literacy, maternal and child health, peace and conflict uh, prevention, resolution, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, economic and community development, and supporting the environment. Those are the seven areas. Go ahead, Steve. And right now we are participating internationally with other Rotary groups, including Dana Orsini and the uh, Rotarians out at Shepherdstown for a clean water well in El Salvador. It's a small village, doesn't have a lot of money, doesn't have a lot of resources. I believe their old source of potable drinking water went bad. So we have uh, partnered with other Rotaries, other organizations to spend thousands on establishing and maintaining, we found that maintaining the things you give grants for is, is also critical, mm -hmm. a clean water well in a small village in El Salvador, and that's ongoing right now. Our, our area governor for Rotary, Pam Wagner, is headed down there to work with that and, and help oversee that. Uh, John, Jeff Haddock has a suggestion for your next book, Murder on the Pickleball Court. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that paddle buried deep. <laughs> <laughs> Just couldn't take that sound of that ball hitting that racket one more time. <laughs> May I also add about the in-kind uh, contributions. Last year, Jersey Mike provided for the volunteers. Um, the sandwiches or the subs on Sunday. Uh, again, that's for our volunteers. And we, we have about 75 volunteers. Mm -hmm. And Chick-fil-A last year uh, partnered with us and did the sandwiches and the little free sandwich cards for the players as well, awesome. but but the sandwiches were strictly for the volunteers because the parks, excuse, yeah, Parks and Rec said that the concession stand is strictly theirs, mm -hmm. so we we can't provide food and, and sodas for the mm -hmm. for the players. Also, Martin's Gros Grocery last year gave us uh, a thousand bottles of water, and they have agreed again to do that this year. And then Holiday Inn has is sponsor or, or um, in kind contribution uh, room for the operation manager that's coming in from Pennsylvania. And then right now we do have four adamant, uh, uh, excuse me, four uh, definite uh, sponsors, which is um, Advocate Insurance, Michelle Sadat, uh, Depot Flores, Pam Wagner, WVU Medicine, Dana Derjanet, SRPR, and Bracken's Painting, Kevin Bracken. And then we're still hoping that several others have said that they're planning on doing it uh, we, uh, from the ones that we had last year, which are still, they're still posted on the on our uh, website, the, the pickleballtournaments.com. Very nice. And uh, Rick Alderton has outed you, Steve, as a retired <laughs> lieutenant colonel from the 167th <laughs> Salute, sir. I ran into Rick just the other day. It was great seeing him. And and how. Yeah, absolutely. Great guy, great family. Uh, and and uh, Rob, one more time, if you could uh, let our listeners know how they can sign up and uh, also sponsor. One, one quick thing, too, is that we use the Interact Clubs, which we mentor. They're high school level. Mm -hmm. And they come out and they, you know, at the Wilmington, how they uh, they retrieve the balls. These Interact students do that as community service. So the mm -hmm. players can stay on the court and play the term. Very nice. Just look at the, um, uh, go on Facebook or uh uh, it's all around, posted as well, the sponsorship form as well as the player to register uh, on Facebook or the Chamber of Commerce and even um, uh, public service throughout the media coverage. Yeah. Pickleballtournaments.com. Type in Rotary and WV for search future tournaments. It's March the 11th and 12th at the W. Randy Smith Center in Inwood. Uh, Pickleball Classic, uh, this is number two they're going to do last yeah. year. They raised, you said, uh, 13000 over, it was over 15,000, 15? but it ended over 11, oh, or 11. about 11. Well, let's go for 20 this year, big guy. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> what do you think? Hopefully. All right, let's yes. do it. Hey, thanks so much for coming in, Rob. Good to thanks see you. Thanks for again. having us. Steve, thank, thank you. Thank you, Rob, John, Mark, Matt.